in your Bibles, turn to Hebrews chapter 1. I, uh, I like all scripture, but I really like the scriptures this morning that was read in Old Testament, especially New Testament. Um, New Testament scripture just kind of fire. You know, Old Testament is like the buildup. You know, as we were, as she was reading the the text in the uh, the Old Testament, uh, but the New Testament was like the exclamation point, the Shazam, the just such a cool, cool, and I and that's not even good enough words to express the the reading of New Testament, and then coming and bringing us into uh, Hebrews chapter one. Uh, it's it too also talks about the supreme, the supremacy of Christ. I'm going to start off with the thought process of uh, better. Jesus is better. In Hebrews chapter 1, you're going to see he's better than the angels. I want to kind of, I'm going to have just a couple of scriptures added to Hebrews chapter 1, though. I want to start off with a thought process so that we can grasp um, who we are also in connection as we're reading scripture. And so in 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 10, verse 12, I'm taking this out so we can kind of grasp a thought process. For we dare not number ourselves or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. For in measuring themselves by themselves, as in looking at themselves and comparing with that other, their, their, their little cluster, by themselves, and comparing themselves, themselves among themselves, they are not wise. They have no understanding. And so I, I want us to understand this because a lot of you compare everything. People have this, this, this process of, well, uh, uh, that person over there, not like me. That person over there, not like me. And we began to compare. We are in, in fact, we are in a, a time frame where comparing is prevalent as in loud. Um, I'm going to go to scripture in just a second, the thought process of the story, right? Of what was it the, the publican and the, and, the, and, the, and the other guy praying, the, the, who was, who was, uh, uh, uncomparable. He was the one that was lifting his eyes to God and, and asking for mercy. And here you have the publican. Well, I'm glad I'm not like him. It can, I mean, the story told, can you, can you imagine that? Uh, uh, I can, because I believe sometimes in church people look at each other in church and go, I'm glad I'm not like them coming in here. Uh, you, you know, uh, now I'm going to a little... I know we're, we're like smiling with it a little bit, but it, it's, it, it, in a sense, it's sad. It's actually wrong, especially if you compare it to the story that Jesus was telling about the, the one praying and the publican. You know, who, who is the one that's uh, right with God? The one who lifted his eyes asking for mercy. The one who would be considered the low life. The one who would be considered not valuable. And we do it all the time. Trying to compare ourselves with others. And, and I, so I... I uh, before I get into Hebrews, I want us to make sure that we don't value ourselves greater than Christ. We don't value ourselves greater than our brother or our sister. I say this over and over because we value, them, we value one another the way God values us. And you will have a changed world when you value people the way God values people. So stop comparing. When you measure yourself or you measure your, the view of you in the light of God, then we understand who is really better. At least I do. <laughs> if I was to look at myself and compare me to God, who's better? Obvious question. If I compare myself to the stories of Jesus, who's better? If I compare myself to how the Holy Spirit was at work within the scripture, who is better? And it, it, it is, ready. it has got to be one of those Captain Obvious. It is obvious who is better. And we're going to get into that as we go into Hebrews 
chapter one. And I hope you'll bear with me because um, I'm actually going to read through Hebrews chapter one. Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. God promised everything to the son as an inheritance, and through the son, he created the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. This shows that the Son is far greater than the angels, just as the name God gave him is greater than their names. Before I get into that, I want to just pause for a moment because uh, I don't know about you guys, but have you ever had conversations about angels? Have you ever been asked as a Christian, do you believe angels? Have you seen an angel or the angel this or angel that or some people say, talk about angels? And I don't know if you have, can just say, I've never heard anything about angels. Because in my opinion, sometimes somewhere angels have been uh, uh, mentioned. I, uh, okay, I got to laugh just a little. Angels in the outfield. <laughs> just saying. It was a Disney movie, if I'm not mistaken. You know? So to sit back and go, you've never heard of angels. It's like, wow, okay, because there's um, already, I'm going to go really old. Angel in my pocket. That's an old movie back in the uh, early, early 70s. And I want to say Fred McMurray. And I can remember sitting in an old, old movie theater. Now, I like these comfortable ones with my popcorn. Knowing about an angel. Or, or, or you could go, what, Christmas time, right? Christmas time. Uh, and, and when you think about it, Hollywood's messed up. They had drunk angels trying to help people. You understand what I'm saying? So to walk through a process of life and never talk about angels, I, I really can't. Um, well, let me go this way, because now we're going to talk about angels. So if you've never heard anything about angels, you've heard about them today. I'm at verse 5 in Hebrews chapter 1. For God never said to any angel what he said to Jesus. You are my son. Today, I have become your father, or I have revealed you as my son. And I want you to know that um, as I read scripture here in Hebrews, people have looked up and have found connections to it in the Old Testament. So as we talk here about how God has become father to the son, you'll find that same thought process in Psalms chapter 2 verse 7. And God said, I will be his father and he will be my son. That is found in 2 Samuel chapter 7. And when he brought his he, when he brought his supreme, that's found in Deuteronomy chapter 32, but I'm at verse 6. And when he brought his supreme, rejoice with him, you heavens. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what Deuteronomy says. Because when I read Deuteronomy chapter 32, when he's talking about the supreme here in Hebrews chapter 1, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, it says this in verse 43. Rejoice with him, you heavens, and let all of God's angels worship him. Rejoice with his people, you Gentiles, and let all the angels be strengthened in him. Son, Oh, excuse me, and that's where, it's stop, where I'm stopping. And so in Deuteronomy, we have, we're even in the Old Testament, they have this understanding of where the angels are placed and where God is positioned with his son and what we as a people are supposed to be positioned in. So when God brought his supreme son into the world, God said, ready? Let all of God's angels worship him. Regarding the angels, he said, he sends his angels like the winds, his servants like flames of fire. But to the Son, I'm at verse 8 in Hebrews 1. But to the Son, he says, your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. I, I'm going to pause. 
Because as I read scripture, I, remember I tell you this, some things are just like, yes! Some things you, I hold on to. I hold on to the things that are greater than me. And you know what? When God says to his son, that king is forever and ever. Sometimes people just don't grasp that thought process of forever and ever. Because we only see when, when, when others get old enough and their last breath is taken. And some people think that is the end. And it is not. Because God is forever and ever. His son is forever and ever. The kingdom is forever and ever and ever. See, if I'm going to grasp the supremacy of God, the supremacy of his son, I got to understand that because we live in a world where people think that they are supreme, that they will be the almighty at the moment. And guess what? Those moments pass. They fade. They're sometimes even forgotten. At the I'm, at, I'm at the the end of verse eight, Hebrews one. You rule with the scepter of justice. You love justice and hate evil. Therefore, O God, your God has anointed you, pouring out the oil of joy on you more than anyone else. We live in a time frame where justice is being cried out. And I will say it over and over again. You will never find justice. You will never find peace. You will never find love. You will never find this thing that you are so much seeking without God. You might have a, a little inkling. You might have someone come up and, 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 and just kind of weasel in and you'll go, woohoo, you're going to rejoice a little bit. That was the answer I was looking for. But you compartmentalize it because you think that your little piece of personal justice is the justice of God of the world, and it is not. It might be a piece of it, but it is not God's justice. God's justice is for all mankind. He hates evil. Do you know that when you look when you look at that context of that scripture, you will notice that if it is not justice, it is definitely followed with evil. That's how you get injustice. No matter how you look at it. See, people don't want to look at the at the foundations and the root of things. And therefore, when you don't look at the foundation and root of things, you will never grasp a supreme, holy, just, merciful, compassionate, and the list goes on, Heavenly Father, with His Holy Son, followed with the work of the Holy Spirit. Let me continue on. Verse 10. He also says to the Son, In the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with your hands. They will perish, but you will remain forever. They will wear out like clothing. You will fold them like a cloak and discard them like old clothing. But you are always the same. You will live forever. As we look at the Savior, it is, I'm sorry, it is, in my opinion, it is, I guess I take it as is. Everything's going to pass. I know there's people who go, oh no, this is going to be, this is going to be it all the time. This is going to be what it is. This is going to be, this is going to, no, all will pass. And only God lives forever. And 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 then you know what? Because we're in our, we're in uh, we're in we discussing we discussed a little bit of heaven on Wednesday night, you know. And when you when you delve into the thought process of a new heaven and a new Jerusalem, when you delve into what God has laid out, we had a discussion of um, uh, it, it was great <laughs> of mansions. <laughs> 
And, and I'm telling you, when you talk about, and we talked about the, the magnitude of how many. And so when I delve into Hebrews 1, I'm sitting there going, because I'm already knowing Hebrews, I was going to talk about Hebrews. I'm excited because it doesn't matter. As forever and ever and ever goes on, and they accept Jesus. Whoever it is accepts the supremacy of the Holy of the Holy One of God, of His Son, Jesus Christ. That mansion's built, and that mansion's built, and that mansion's built, and that mansion's built forever and ever. Now God, verse 13, God never said to any of the angels, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. Once again, I hear words coming from the songs. Therefore, verse 14, angels are only servants, spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. who inherit salvation. See, when you begin to look at who we are as a people in the time frame that we are in, it is of most importance to share the supremacy of Christ. See, you cannot walk up to someone and go, you know, Jesus, well, you can. Jesus loves you, and your life not reflected. And here's how that story goes. People will look at you and go, well, what is there about love? Because you show none of it. The only love that they may, that they, that they may see of a holy God may be the place that God has put you in in that divine moment. I will say that many times. And so therefore, you, you recognize a holy Christ that saved you. And so, yes, just with looking at these scriptures, just possibly God has, well, for me, in my thought process, because the Holy Spirit lives in me, there is no fear. Because the Holy Spirit lives in me, because the scripture talks about the, when you accept Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, the Spirit is at work immediately within your life. And so with that being said, and, and, and you're just going to have to delve in and read and find out how does that work? How, do they talk about the Holy Spirit in scriptures and how it works in people? Yes, they do. And so I have that right there to, to know that the connection of the three, the Trinity, God, the Holy Spirit, his son, Jesus Christ. With that, it is an angel in my pocket, you might say. With that, it's an angel on my shoulder, you might say. With that, you might say there is, um, okay, because we live in a little bit of a funky place sometimes, there's an aurora about you. <laughs> no, uh, that might have been the 60, 70 thought process. But you know what I'm talking about? You can't, because they make movies like that, too. <laughs> I don't care what you want to call it. I'm going to tell you, and see, that's the thing. In a world that we live in, people have inklings. They have small understanding. They have a little bit of a thought process. And God has placed you to give the truth. To give the truth. There is no such thing as this truth versus that truth. There is only one truth. And he is supreme. He is holy. And he lives forever and ever. And as in Hebrews 4, excuse me, Hebrews 1, Right here, we know exactly where he is at. I, I read, where is he at? The right hand of God. And so, can I talk about this inkling for a sec? And this is where people struggle. Why has God got to be over there? Why is God over there? Look at the turmoil that is happening here. Look at, look at, um, see, um, look at the pandemic that has taken place. I mean, we have numbers thrown in our face all the time. We see where there's devastation. And then, then top it off, are you ready? Um, there's lightning bolts that are striking individuals as they're clicking on a light switch in their house. Yes, that happened last week. Or there's a, a tornado that rips through another city. Or ready? We're, we're well into, I believe, the beginnings of hurricane season is quickly approaching. So things are happening where people are wondering, where is God? Why, why is God so far away? 
I don't see no angels that are doing anything for me. Last week, are you ready? <laughs> Last week, because one of my favorite stories is the talking donkey with, with uh, uh, ba Balaam, I believe is how you pronounce his name. And uh, he was supposed to go and the king wanted him to curse the Israelites who were camped out and, and God told him, no, you bless them. So he blessed the enemy, which the king thought was the enemy. He blessed the Israelites or the people of Israel um, three times. I'm going to tell you this, that um, the kids are doing that story today. I'm like, I, I'm, um, I opened up, I go, oh, wow, they're going to do the donkey story. And so when they delve into the donkey story, they find out, are you ready? About a supreme God. Who ready? As, as Balaam goes and blesses the children of Israel, he also gives a warning of what is going to happen underneath that king that there is one coming who will, who, who will rule who is going to be king forever so, so as he's talking to this king 1400 years before the savior touches the earth who is supreme who comes holy learn to tell the stories Find out what is the truth. So, look, if I may, you know, I, I, as I read chapter one, that, that was my whole thought process. We walk out of here knowing that I am, I am only God's child. It's not that I'm nothing. I am God's child. And that's awesome. That, you know what? Um, I have to be very careful. Because if I was to, if I was to compare, it would be the ultimate. You're going to hell and I'm not. You can, you, you, can, you can lay out your cars, you can lay out your houses, you can lay out your finances, you can lay out all you want against me. But if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, my mansion has been built. Waiting for me. And so, actually, just so you know, I don't go around telling people that. God has given a better way to tell individuals how much he loves them. And that talking donkey story, I cannot curse what God has blessed. I walked away with that, you know, as the kids were getting their lesson, and, and it's one of my favorite stories. Um, Pastor Mark, come on up. We're going to get ready to close here. Uh, for me, it was like this. It's an understanding of who God is. In, in that story with the donkey, uh, I say it this way, because guess what? It's told this way as the donkey is uh, leading, uh, walking, and he's riding. And what happens? An angel appears before him. Okay, That's the whole connection to that donkey story. An angel. But that angel gives purpose. Because at, one, at the, the third time of beating that donkey, Balaam's like this, let's just go home. You know what? Um, at, at first he was, he was angry. You made me look like a fool. And then boom. Do I, I'm going to pretend. Dog's like pointing his hoof. Look there. He <laughs> did. It's not in the scripture. The donkey laid down the last time while getting beat. And Balaam sees the angel. Well, I should just go home then. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go and curse God's people. And the angel said, no, no, no. You go and tell them only what God tells you. See, we're in a place today of knowing who we are. The bad that we come up against, God is with you. Ask God to reveal the words. Ask God to reveal the actions. I'm going to close with two scriptures. Zechariah chapter 14 verse 9 says this, And the Lord will be king over all the earth. On that day, there will be one Lord. His name alone will be worshipped. We're about to close in worship. We're about to close one who is Lord of the nation. My last one is this. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 through, 10, excuse, 8 through 11. He humbled himself. This is talking about Jesus. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even to death on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him, 
gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. There is no evil in this world that is greater than him. There is no heartache that is greater than him. There is no division that is greater than him. There is nothing greater than my king. As we leave this, get ready to leave this morning, we realize he is the one from the very beginning made a plant, made the waters, made the heavenly realms, made us. And then he died for us. What a great thing to know that one that is better than everyone, better than everything, chose me. And he chose you too to accept him and follow him. And when you realize that he is better, you will know this, that he died so that your life will be better. Follow him. Let us stand and pray together before we sing this song. Oh God, we worship you in song. But first and foremost, we worship you with who we are. As in we give our lives to you, God. There is none greater. The greatness, the greatest, died for us. So that our sin could be forgiven. So God, we ask that our sin, that, that the things that we have on our hearts, the things that are, are wrong against you, God, we ask for forgiveness right now. We might think for a moment, well, this happened, or that happened. God, please, please forgive me. Forgive me. Help me to be better. Help me to live better. But God, I cannot do it without you. May I be a catalyst for someone else to come to know you. The thing that, that brings them knowledge of knowing you. And not just knowing, but accepting you as Lord. Help our steps to be wise. Help us not to look left or right comparing anything, but keeping our eyes focused on you with our steps. As we follow in Jesus' holy name, amen.